Welcome back to the vault. Today's video is a review of the call logs and visitor logs from Jeremy DeWitt's most recent stay in prison. I've taken the data that Police Tube's far removed uncle sent me and did a little detective work to figure out who owns the phone numbers. Now, if you remember, Jennifer said that Rania had not picked up a call from Jeremy in months. I'll provide a clip reminding everybody of what she said. Jeremy was definitely speaking to Jennifer several times a day. So it makes me wonder what Jeremy was telling her about their future. She often claims that she's going to marry Jeremy and how his mom is her future mother-in-law, which makes no sense whatsoever. Rania would have to divorce Jeremy before anything close to that would happen. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the video. Don't forget to like the video, comment down below, share and subscribe. Now Jennifer is a bit crazy as evidenced from this particular clip from Police Tube's far removed uncle. She just shows up around the building, just shows up and just, look, watch, she just walks in. She took the bottle of water off the desk. And then she throws it. Okay. And then she throws it. Okay. Now, here's a clip of Jennifer claiming that Jeremy DeWitt's mom is going to be her future mother-in-law. Yeah, I know, delusional. Hey guys, it's me. So I know that I haven't done um, any videos in quite a while and I don't think you've heard my voice in maybe two months. I don't know. Um, I've been really busy. Obviously, the last video I put up gave you guys some updates, but there's been so much shit that has gone down. I don't think I'm going to touch on it that much in this video, but I will be making another one soonish. I think I stated in my last video or the, no, the second to last video that, you know, Jeremy really wants us to keep our private lives private. Um, and I think that was probably like one of the best things that he ever said. Sometimes, you know, Jeremy doesn't get it right, but I feel like this time he really got it right because we've been doing so well, which is kind of crazy since he's incarcerated, but we've been doing so well since I've kind of pulled back from like talking about us. Anyway, I'm not going to ramble too much. Um, I am going to play some recorded calls that I made to Orange County Sheriff's Office. Of course, they knew that they were being recorded because I told them that I was recording them. So there's no wiretapping over here. Um, and I wanted to play that for you guys. The reason why I reached out to them was because Jeremy informed me that they were giving his mother, my future mother-in-law, the runaround. They gave her the runaround because so much has been going on with that evidence that's down in Orange County. Let me, let me explain this to you. Okay, I'm trying to make this sort of quick. I have a therapy session coming up, so I'm trying to get all this done before then. We've heard so many stories about this evidence. It exists, it doesn't exist, it's there, it's not there. Now that we have established Jennifer's mental stability, let's get into the logs. Now here is the call summary, and as I mentioned before, PT's far, far, far removed uncle sent me over the call logs, and I took the information and put it into Excel format. This enabled me to filter the data and determine how many times each person was called, call duration, cost per call, and totals. If you look at the highlighted portion, Jeremy made 996 calls and spent almost $1,600 in the seven month time frame captured in the logs. I was finally able to crack the final piece of the puzzle after speaking to a friend and fellow YouTuber, Shane Pallotta, who helped me search the last phone number that was not available through public searches and it turned out to be Rania. 
This information found in the spreadsheet was actually pretty revealing. Jeremy was making an average of five calls per day, averaging $1.59 per call, which is around $8 per day while incarcerated, which is it's a lot of money. Uh, here's a claim Jer uh, Jennifer made about Jeremy and Rania not speaking to each other for months. I wasn't going to make a video. I was actually gonna wait a few weeks to really say something, to give an update about what has been going on for months now. But I got a call from Jeremy today and we know that a lot of stuff has been said online recently that is not true. And I guess now is the time for me to kind of correct some things. The first thing I will talk about is, I guess the most important thing to me and whatever's out there, it's about my relationship with Jeremy. So I guess there are rumors that Jeremy and I are not together or we've had some issues or something's come up where we're not talking or we can't talk to each other that is a complete lie and it's something that's so stupid to lie about because it's so easy to prove i mean i'm sure that right now someone's putting aside all their life savings to get the recorded calls between me and jeremy so there are you know multiple hundreds of calls i had to pause making the video just now because jeremy just called me again second time that he's called me today and it's only 11 13 a.m so yeah we talk all the time and we're doing fine i mean obviously there's all the stress with all the court stuff but other than that there are no issues supposedly there's information online about recent issues between us and that we can't talk or we don't want to talk to each other and that's not real that's all fake i mean i've i feel like i'm repeating myself because i've been saying this for so long that there are people out there who have nothing to do they're very pathetic, they don't have lives, and they live through me and through Jeremy. And if they're not talking about us, they don't know what to do. So they make up stuff, they post it online. People who don't really know us or want to find anything that they can against us will believe it. If anything, Jeremy and I are closer now than we were before he went in there. I talk to him all the time, I talk to his attorneys all the time. I talk to his attorneys more than he does, more than anyone in his family does. Okay, so here is Jennifer's call data. Now, not all that Jennifer said was untruthful. In fact, I believe she was being told by Jeremy that he hadn't spoken to Rania for months and he's looking for a divorce attorney. But unlike Jennifer, Rania has a young child and a job. She's constantly busy, unlike Jennifer who has nothing to do but to stew on her quote unquote future husband. I mean, could you just imagine yourself in her shoes? All she dreams about all day is being with a felon and an RSO offender, if you know what I mean. She keeps falling for the same lies over and over and over, expecting that Jeremy is now telling the truth. Now, I did a video the other night with Shane Pilata going over Jennifer's video from the June 14th, 2023, where she makes some wild claims. Uh, the video just shown was video one in the review. If you guys have time, go check out his channel. Uh, he's got some really good perspectives on Jennifer and Jeremy's relationship. It's honestly just a soap opera. Now, the other thing that seems odd to me is the fact that Jeremy and Jennifer constantly claim they have a bunch of supporters and fans like Little Motors, and Jeremy even claimed that a prison guard was a Little Motor. They're both delusional and they really deserve each other. And I think they have more, uh, <laughs> I think they have more people that like watching a slow motion car crash that happened right in front of them than actual fans. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Another pair of Oakleys, just in, these new ones here, see, nice new. Um, but it is an Armani suit for those that don't know what Armani is, you can, you can Google it, my little keyboard warriors. I miss you guys. Fuck, I miss you guys. I miss talking to you. I fucking miss talking to you. I miss my fans. I fucking miss you guys. And my funeral homes that were watching are my fans. I know you're there. And the only way I can survive this gauntlet of lies and maze of deceit and bullshit is to step down for now. I have extremely big plans coming up and um, the money will be needed for that. Speaking of lots of eBay fans, you fucking guys are cool as fuck too. Not only are you cool as fuck, but you're paying for things and asking me to sign. You know how many helmets I've signed? How many holsters I've signed? And they're paying extra for it? You guys are awesome. I can't tell you. I've sold more than you would actually guess. Um, 
I know I could happily figure some things out with other businesses and big things coming soon. I, I promise you, um, I'm still here today. Today, I'll give you that today, but we'll see. Hey, you guys, I appreciate you guys following me. Love my fans. I love you guys. We are going to do the motor badges soon. My motors are reporting in. I'm telling you guys are 10-8 when you guys report in. Uh, I love it. I think it's great. Um, the rest of you, quit fucking being so nasty and rude. Quit fucking talking about people. You want to talk shit about me? Run it. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. You all can talk all the shit you want about me. At the end of the day, I have my business. I have my beautiful home, my beautiful family, my extracurricular activities. I, I got it. So you talking shit about me don't hurt me at all. I don't want to sound like a jerk because I know I'm a dick. It's not illegal to be a dick in Florida just yet. Not yet. At least that's not what the statutes say. All right, so here is Rania's call data. Uh, she has spoken to Jeremy 167 times over the seven month period he was in jail. Her call total was just under $300 with an average of $1.70 per call. It looks like she spoke to Jeremy almost every day, but like any person with a life and bills, they have other stuff to do than just sit on the phone with Jeremy all day so he can cry about how he got himself into this mess. Now, if you remember what Jennifer said on the video from June 14th, she says that Jeremy has not spoken to Rania in months. As you can see, this is not true. He was speaking to her on an almost daily basis, which means that either he's lying to Jennifer or she is lying to us. I tend to believe that Jeremy was lying to her based on previous recordings, you know, that Jennifer kind of laps up whatever Jeremy says with a spoon and asks for seconds. Now, Jennifer has a habit of putting up harmful videos and then taking them down based on her status with Jeremy. When Jeremy was getting uh, close to being released, she had put up a video that showed Jeremy had committed several acts of domestic violence against her. Now, uh, she put it back up, would take it down, put it back up based on, in my opinion, her relationship status with Jeremy and what he's telling her. Now, this tells me specifically that something happened right before Jeremy was released, and I think it has to do with the fact that in his uh, bond request, in his bond hearing, he said that he's got a wife and kid to go home to, and that's where he's going. And I feel like Jennifer felt like she was left out in the cold from there. Let me know what you guys think about that particular part, okay? Okay, so next on the list, we have Jeremy's mom, Ursula. They spoke about, let's see, a total of 214 times, averaging $1.09 per call, and they averaged around a call per day. Uh, Jeremy spoke to Jennifer the most by far, his mom the second most, and then his wife. Though his wife was the least spoken to, it was nearly every day that they spoke, so I really don't feel like that's such a big deal. Now, the narrative given to us by Jennifer just didn't seem to match up with what was actually happening. Jeremy's mom had power of attorney while he was locked up, so I assume she was helping to liquidate assets from Jeremy's business to help pay for bills, attorney's fees, and so forth. Uh, Jeremy talks a lot about investments he has in other states and how he travels to Egypt for two to three months every year and so on. But if you watch my new charges video, you would know how Jeremy got a majority of his money, and it's not from legitimate business, it's more than likely from insurance fraud. So yeah, I mean, Jeremy's just a nightmare. He's got a lot going on, and none of it's good. You know, he's constantly talking about how he has no money. I mean, if you, if you recall the video where Jennifer's asking for him to put uh, a, a hotel room on his credit card and he's saying I have no money and how he's broke and so on and so forth and then he goes on a video on his Metro State channel talking about how he's got 37 credit cards and if you know anything about credit it's not good to have more than three credit cards you shouldn't have more than two or three and you shouldn't have high balances so I don't know I, I highly doubt Jeremy had 37 credit cards I highly doubt he had 10 I think he's so, he's so full of crap. So, 
Before we get into the visitor log data, here's a couple clips, one about somebody calling him a liar on one of his lives, and the other one about Jeremy having no feelings whatsoever. I know I, a lot of people don't think I have feelings, and I really don't. Um, quite honestly, I don't have feelings. But Negative 37, keep on, rock on, brother. Yep, and uh, that's why I passed the one here with the gentleman that's actually still with the sheriff's office that does it for the sheriff's department. Okay, so here is the visitor information from January 1st, 2022 to June 13th of 2023. It looks like Jeremy had a visit from his mom on February 10th, 2023 on site. Then she had another visit by video on February 17th, 2023, and then again on the 22nd of February. Uh, there must be something important going on that month. Maybe he was selling some stuff or getting the power of attorney together. You know, who really knows? Okay, now on February 24th of 2023, which just happens to be a couple days after Jeremy's mom came to see him, it looks like Jennifer was supposed to come and see Jeremy, but there is a no-show listed for the check-in. Now listen, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but she was scheduled right after his mom showed up, so... I don't know if maybe his mom told him, okay, Rania's willing to take you back home now. I mean, who knows with these people? They're constantly flip-flopping around, but it makes me wonder what happened. You know, did they have another fight? Who knows? Okay, so now on to the last little piece here. Uh, now, we have some more visits from mom. Looks like she had three video visits with her Jer Bear on February 26th, March 5th, and March 26th, which are, you know, pretty successive, right? Run one right after the next. There seems to be no real discernible pattern behind the visits and the phone calls. Um, you know, maybe life just gets in the way and uh, the mom can't get there all the time. I mean, really only they know. Like I said, when I look at the call logs, nothing really stands out to me here. So let me know if you guys see anything else. Maybe I'll show a little scrolling feature here where you can see the call logs and kind of how things happen from there. Just to wrap it up here, I just wanted to go through some of these more recent calls. And we've got Jennifer, 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 Rania, his mom, Jennifer, 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 Rania, Ursula, his mom. So as you can see, and he's pretty much been in contact with Rania the entire time. So the story doesn't quite match. And I don't fault Jennifer for that. I, I really do fault Jeremy because I feel like he was leading her on to believe something that just was not true. Now, if you look at the call times, I mean, they're all pretty long. So if we go up here, let's we'll put in Rania and see how long these calls are. Let's go all the way up to the top. 14, 14, 14. So pretty long, so a short one here, six minutes, 15, 14, 15. You know, a couple short ones, a couple short ones, but for the most part, they use up most of the 15 minute limit. You know, at least I assume a 15 minute limit because there's a lot of that just cut off right at 15 minutes. Real short one here, maybe he left her a message for the dogs. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but he always asks about the dogs in, in the calls and only secondarily does he ever ask about his daughter when he hears her in the background, which I think is strange to me. If I were in jail or prison or whatever he's in, I would, uh, I would probably do that myself. I'd probably be asking about my kids before I'd be asking about dogs but I'm not Jeremy. So, and when you go back to Jennifer, you'll see. So they just, they talk all the time, several times a day. She was not lying about that. Now, um, she had mentioned that she got a call at 1113 on that previous call. I don't know if she just had the time off. It was 1056 AM, so who knows? But yeah, so she's constantly talking to him all the time, all the time, several times a day. So, I mean, there's a couple days where she skips, but she certainly makes up for it. 
let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, comment down below, share and subscribe. And Motor One is... A serial police impersonator. The garbage disposal is a fuckboy, but I got it to work, right? Anyways, talk to you guys later. Motor One's rolling.